So welcome to the next episode of uh, Spotlight and we are at Limbrook Fisheries in Ringwood. Um, not too far from the new forest for this one. And it is a six acre lake. Um, we're coming to the end of February. It's probably the best days we've had for quite some time regarding temperatures. And um, yeah, it's looking all right, it's looking all right. The lake is stocked with approximately 460 carp. 20 of those uh, over 30 pounds. I think the late record, I believe, is 38, but it could be bigger than that. And there's at least 250, uh, 20 and above. So um, the stocks here, we just need to find them and try and put a few in the bank. But so what I hear, it hasn't been fishing the greatest, but that can change just like that. So with further ado, I'm going to get my rod sorted out and because uh, I'm not going to catch fish when I'm sitting on the side of it. Me and Mark have been here around about an hour, maybe a bit longer, and um, set up in a, a peg that you have to book. And just to my right hand side, there's a set of uh, reeds just down here. And within 10 minutes of setting the rods up, one showed straight in the middle of them. So I've just pub chucked a PVA bag straight on top of it in hope for an early fish, because at this time of year, showing fish, it's a godsend. There's something you would 100% go off. Uh, I'm hoping that one rattles off quickly because Mark got first choice of swim and I got second. So if I can have first fish, that'd be very nice. Get the other rods out, I can definitely see fish moving around in them reeds, just pushing them all around. High hopes for the reeds. <laughs> <laughs> All we need now is a bite. <laughs> All set up, ready for a bite. And you've got them stupid glasses on. There's nothing wrong with these glasses. They're not good, they don't look good. I'm Where the them. hell did you get them from anyway? Which Jamie's one? van, they're his sons. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. Well, how are you fishing then? I don't know at the moment. I'm, I'm, well, I know how I'm fishing, I'm just not sure whether it's the right, right way to fish. And I've got some maggots on, because you can use maggots here up until the 1st of March. So I have brought some with me, but I'm also using my bait. So Which I want to give also, it, so am I. I want to give it a good crack of the whip, because everyone else seems to be catching on it. So I want to see for myself. But, uh, oh, obviously I had that showing fish to my right with an hour of us being here, so that yeah. was a good enough reason to put one well, down I, now. I did actually have a fish roll in the left hand margin. So we've both had a fish show in front of us. But what I've actually done is because I see that fish and it was only like 10 yards out, I went and got the bait pole and spoon. So I could just tip it on the head and I might actually just spoon feed, match fishing style the margin with the spoon mm. on top of my rig because Works. It does. It but at the moment, the bite, it I'm leaving it as bite, it is it? because I'm doing something a little bit different as well, which I'm going to show later. But I'm going to hold that to myself because if it does produce a fish, it is slightly different and it is a PVA bag which you like using, but it's not the way you use a PVA bag. Not the way. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's different. It's not something you say every day. I asked Jamie, but he wouldn't tell me. I heard it and I was like, that sounded like a PVA bag. He goes, I don't mean about using PVA bags. That was definitely a bag. 
was I great. asked him and he went, I'll wait for him to tell you. Yeah. Well, you're sick. I'm not going to tell you. I'm I'm not, I don't think you were. Right. Quite sick. When this goes out. So how are you fishing, though? PBA bags. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens then. Yeah, you with your uh, normal PVA bag, me with my. But they're not normal, they've got your bait in. To the PVA bag. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone use the PVA bag in the way that I've got it on. Probably someone does use it that way, but I've never seen it. I physically can't think of how you could exactly. change the PVA bag. Exactly, it's going to muck with your mind and it's going to annoy you, so. Well, that's what produces I like a bite for you. Yeah, I like playing with your head. <laughs> Well, that's one night gone, and I've been awake since sunrise, and I've not seen anything out there. And it was literally like a meal pool this morning. I woke up a little bit late. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> you didn't miss much anyway. But all I can say is no one has had a fish yet. But it still looks good for a bite. I Do I stick to what I know and what I know is a proven method method of catching fish, or do I just do completely opposite to what everyone else is doing and what everyone else is saying not to do? Opposite. Still haven't made my mind up though. Why don't you do, you do it? I, I was thinking about it. That I was I was waiting for the morning period to disappear because is it started that, getting. Is that fizzing? There's a caught one out there, so it'll be quite difficult to tell. So hard to just not give themselves away. But no, I started getting quite a few lines on that right hand rod where we saw them fish yesterday. So I was waiting for that mor morning period to disappear. Fish. One of them one beep sprints. <laughs> Hit it, Mark! <coughs> Right, panic over. Swan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I thought that was it then. I've got my lines, haven't they? Right, so I've decided I'm going to make the change and go against the grain here. Um, the spom is out. I did last night have three baits along that margin over there. Very, very snaggy, um, but it hasn't really done anything. It's quite sheltered. The sun's coming over around the back of those trees and the light's not really getting there. It's double figure temperatures. I just feel that the carp are going to be in that centre part of that lake, just warming up during the, uh, during the day. So no one else is putting bait out. I've I've seen that, so I'm going to do the opposite. The bait's going out now. I've got to float out there on an area that I've just marked out, 12 and a half wraps. Seems a little bit harder than the rest of the lake out there, so it's probably an area that's visited quite frequently by fish. There may have been some form of food source out there previously, so I'm just going to keep topping this up. Every hour, two spawns, that's it. Fine pass call, cool. a little bit of maggot and pellet, crush boily. I'm not going to go over the top. Little and often is my approach. So let's see how this goes because at the moment I haven't got an answer um, in what is the best way of trying to tackle this lake. So I'm gonna to have to try and find it out for myself.
finding fish, showing fish, anything has been completely non-existent. And the edge of the reeds that I've been fishing was the, the best chance I had at having a fish. But we stood here for the best part of an hour to two hours this morning and we are just watching the reeds loop over where there's so many fish in here. But it's not, you can't get to it. You can't fish it from the swim next door because you're not allowed. So what I'd done, uh, baiting poling, from my swim to the edge of the reeds was the best, best option I had. But just getting up in this tree and watching them, they're in there because they know they're safe. And we just can't get to them. And I'm standing in this tree and mad, it's mad how many fish are swimming in and out. And just watching the reeds depart as they swim straight through the middle of them. But it's not over yet. I've still got one on the edge of them reeds. Hopefully one comes out and we we just need one fish now. But yeah, we know where they are. And we know what they're doing and they're making it very difficult. Stop laughing, let's just get this done so we can get f***ing food because I'll get angry <laughs> when I'm hungry. <laughs> f***ing hell, I'm hungry. <laughs> you don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, f that's it, innit? Yes, that, we're done. No, I can't do it aggressive like that. <laughs> we can, that's it. What is it? It is it, we're done. That's it, we're done. Fine. Done and dusted, run out of time. And I'm annoyed, I don't like blanking. And it doesn't happen often. And when it does, I can't think of anything worse. I don't know how I'm going to face my missus going home telling her I blanked. I have to tell my <laughs> mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon we ought to... Go and have a quick shower. Oh, I've got to get rid of this beard because it's irritated me. Yeah, I've been saying it's very itchy. And, um, yeah, I'll meet you in 24 hours in the next venue. Yeah. And we'll make that part two of this episode. So, technically, it's not a blank. Hopefully. Let's go. Well, we've arrived at our next venue after leaving Lynbrook and we're now at NMG Fisheries. Um, it's actually not that far away from Lynbrook, it's probably about a 40 minute drive. Um, we didn't however get here 24 hours after, which we anticipated, went back home. On the way back home, my van windscreen got smashed and it went all drastically wrong. Uh, so we've come back actually a week later um, to, to this venue and it's, yeah, it's nice and quaint, it's tree-lined. It used to be an old match fishing lake. Uh, it's not no more. There's another lake over the back there which is used for, for matches, but you've still got all these platforms still around the lake, so it, it does give you the vibe of uh, still a match lake, but it's not. The lake was stocked back in the early 70s, so there is some old, old fish in here still, and some of them are 50 year old and they're the ones that we're really trying to target. Um, there's nothing massive in here, but they are very, very pretty. Although they do go into their 30 pounds, so that's still a big fish, and there's a, quite a few th uh, 20s as well. So hopefully this is gonna go to plan um, and bring us all back up on a high after, yeah, the, uh, the blank at Lynbrook. But we're gonna go back there another day anyway and uh, have another crack at that one. Well, this lake is actually uh, quite different to the others that we've fished before. And it's, I can't remember the last time I actually had to think so hard about what I actually want to do. And the reason for that is most of the other venues, they're quite a, your, your standard um, fishery. Where well, this one is 
It's a nice little woodland lake, as you can see around us, but you've got quite a few match lake, match fishing platforms on the other side. So there's an indication here that it does see quite a few match anglers at times. So I think the carp are going to be holding up on that far bank over there by them platforms, because there's a structure which obviously carp love. And at the end of the day, where do you think all the bait's going from the matchman? They ain't taking it home with them. It's going in the margin. So, my first effort to try and catch some of these carp, you know, I'm gonna put both rigs over that back margin. I've walked over there. I've put a handful of pellet, a bit of boilie crumb, a few large boilies as well. I've got my rig here ready to go out with one of my own baits that I'm testing and I've never used before. So that's gonna be interesting. And um, I'm probably gonna put just a little stringer of about three or four baits on top of that with that as well, just a, a bit of extra, extra attraction and see where we go from there. I'm here, I've got two rods on the spot. I've gone off local knowledge of two areas that are prolific to doing bites. Unfortunately, he has said that bags are not the way forward on here and it's a bawly approach. So I've completely changed tactics and I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna fish completely differently this session. Um, I actually have seen a fish show on the tip of the island on my right hand rod um, and the bailiff also saw it and he said that it's the first fish he's seen show all winter. So that is, a, I'm hoping that right hand rod goes because there's fish there, clearly. Um, the left hand rod, I haven't actually put any bait on yet. Um, it's about five foot and it's quite a hard spot. He said it could do me a fish and you can't ignore local knowledge. So it's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, but I'm gonna go and get some bait on that now and hopefully I can, I can nick a quick bite. So like I said, the area on the left hand on the left hand rod is just down just in front of this bush. So that's where I'm gonna put some bait in. Only two handfuls, not gonna to go too mad. Just trying to pick up the first bite. Would you look at that? The local knowledge has well and truly paid off after that last session where we struggled. It's nice to have one. First blood, first fish from a new venue. I get this one back, get the rod back out and hopefully have a couple more. Nice. So Mark's just cooked us a lovely cheeseburger up and just as I finish that, my left hand rod has ripped into action, but as that's happened, the heavens have absolutely opened and it is chucking it down. Um, I changed that rod 10 minutes before it went, um, still in that left hand side margin, threw a bit more bait down there. Um, so it's looking promising to have a couple more bites. Haven't actually seen the fish properly yet because it's still in the net and we're trying to wait for this to die down before we pick it up. Um, but yeah, it's looking really good and hopefully we can get a couple more.
completely missed that meeting. <laughs> <Coast day. laughs> there we are, my first fish of the session. And uh, it's, a, it's a ghosty. Over 20 pound. Yeah, absolutely cracking fish. Bit surprised when I see this guy in the net, to be fair, but look at that. There's about, I think I said, I think the baby said there was about 30 over 20 pound in here. So, uh, yeah, that's one off the list. 29 to go. <laughs> I want that fish called Poppy, which is another ghosty. And it hasn't been out for a while. But that one's a mirror. But yeah, cracker. Better get that rod back out. Well, normally with my updates, first thing in the morning, they're normally a little bit quiet, but last night kicked off and um, had that nice 20 pound ghosty at half past one in the morning. And I've just had my second fish just as the sun's rising. And when we turned up, the bailiff actually said there's a few hidden gems in here on top of the 30 fish that go above 20 pound into 30 pound. Um, and I think I might have got one of those hidden gems sitting in that retainer, just in that water there. So I'm just gonna make myself a quick cup of tea, compose myself and um, get a little bit of footage for you guys to so have a look at this baby. Wow, is uh, all I'm going to say is wow. And you often hear people saying it's not about size, it's about what they look like, and that is a prime example. I would take that fish over any 40 pound stocky any day of the week. And I'm just so excited to see what else is in this lake. Um, I think I found one of these hidden gems, so they say. Um, but yeah, really, really looking forward for the rest of this trip just to see if we do pick up anything else out. Um, but one thing that I have done is when we first turned up, we spoke to the bailiff and a few people that are on the lake as well. And I had people catching to my right and I've got people, and I'll say people, Stephen, catching to my left and I've been a little bit sort of like stagnant in the middle uh, in the middle here and the areas that the bailiffs pointed out as a um, as a, a prime spot haven't really worked and they're feeding around the lake so I'm obviously not in the right area so I've gone against the grain I've gone against the advice of the bailiffs and I've actually put them in areas where I feel the fish might be and it's paid off I've picked out two of the 20s two twenties out of the crowd of fish that's in here and I'm over the moon with both fish that I've had that 20 pound ghosty just over and that 20 plus pound uh, wood carving that we've just released another good thing is as well I'm testing my bait and the carp was discreeting it all over the map so I'm really really happy about that I've got a lot of people been testing it for me and they're having great results on it but this is actually the first time I'm using my recipes that I used to use 25, 30 years ago, and they still work. So yeah, all in all, this is a great start to the session, and I'm just so pleased that I'm cashing in on my bait again. So um, I'm gonna finish my cup of coffee. This is the second one, 
and then I might have to go and use that little boy's room over the back there because uh, it's going to run through me, especially when you get to my age. I'm starting to feel it now. So this afternoon has been very slow from last night. Um, only I've still only had two fish. I pulled my rods out for a couple of hours, two rest to swim. I've been trickling bait in for the best part of this afternoon. Um, fresh rigs, fresh baits. They're going on the exact same spots they was on last night because they produced a bite each. So I've got no reason why I shouldn't be putting them back on them spots. Um, I'm just going to get them rods back on them spots, put a little bit more bait back on them, and uh, hopefully be holding the fish up the next time you see me. It's been a slow day today. Um, it's quite cold first thing this morning, but as the day's gone on, the temperature's risen, and it was about this time yesterday where we started getting action. So I think what happens, as the sun comes round onto this part, this is the last part of the lake that starts warming up, and yesterday I brought my rods in, last part of the lake to warm up, hottest part of the lake has begun to dark, and I think that worked for me well that's what I'm going with anyway that's what went through my head and I ended up getting two two fish from it so I'm going to do the same again today Ross in the corner not so long ago had one so that again is another good sign that they're uh, they're starting to feed up so maybe this is a, a a time that they'd like to have a bit of a munch so time will tell but if we do get anything it'll be the first people to know and we're going to get a Chinese or a takeaway of some form tonight so uh I'm looking forward to that at the moment and I am feeling a little bit tired. So I'm just going to sit down and watch the water and if I do see something, I'm going to react to it very, very quickly. That's for sure. There you go, mate. So, a bit of a slow day today, mate. Not with a lot going on. I didn't, I didn't see a fish at all today. I haven't seen nothing at all. What's it been there? No, I've seen the one. Oh. I meant today. Oh, right, well, yeah. No, nothing. I haven't seen nothing today. Anyway, I've got a question for you that I'm dying to know the answer to. How was that new ND sleep bag? Absolutely amazing. What, full heat, half an hour, used hardly any batch life out of the power pack. And then once it was put on the lowest setting, it just took me through the night and the heat didn't disappear, it's like it was the heat was trapped. So it couldn't it couldn't get out. So was there anything left on the battery pack at, in the morning? Well the battery it? pack had four bars and it still had four bars by the morning. So is it a big battery pack you was using? Yes. Well that's interesting then. So it looks like uh, It's a very good product. It's gonna work well. No test and abuse it. As you do. Yeah. Cool. Right, let's finish these cups of coffee off. Um, because yeah, it's been a long day. Oh yeah, I want to have a little bit of a sleep. I want you out of my bivvy now. <coughs> Take the coffee with you. That's my cue to leave then. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, mate. If you do get anything though, let me know. I will do. Because if I get anything, I'm gonna come and let you know. <coughs> All right. See you later. See you in the morning. Maybe tonight. Hopefully. Well, the spawn's been absolute carnage. Um, 
you may recall that I did say that I was going to just sit on my rods last night. But from about half past two, fish were showing in front of me. Boshing out everywhere, kept an eye on them for a little bit, for a little bit of bait out, and then I decided to bring the rods in and threw both rods onto the area where the fish were showing. Just single hook baits and then carried on, just putting a bit, a bit of boilie every now and again over the top. Well, at about half past five, my right hand rod went. I lifted into it and got a little tiny, I must say probably about 14, 15 pound, maybe bigger, um, little common. The next thing, the other rod's gone. So I've got one in the net, my second rod's gone. I'm playing that, it's going absolutely mental at the rod tip. It's ducking, diving all over the place and it's doing that spiraling motion. And I hate it when it does that, it's like the death roll. I managed to get that one in the net, I threw both the rods back out, I put both fish in the retainer, and as I'm doing that, my rod's gone again. So I've now got three fish. I'm gonna compose myself, quick coffee, and go and show you what these fish look like. There we go, my third fish. Absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this session. And uh, it just so happens as I pick this one up, Mark's into another one now. So I'll put this one down, get this one back, and go and see what Mark's had. Put it on the bank. We've got about an hour left now, and um, I see a couple of fish just showed down in this bay where no one's been. And uh, I've just been given permission by the bailiff, because there's no one on here now, that um, I can come down here and put a rod out, and hopefully I can try and end it with another fish. So I'm just hoping one of these rips off just before we go home. Last chance alone. Hope we can make it happen. So seeing a couple of them fish um, show down this end paid off. Hasn't taken too long. A few freebies over the top. The right hand rod just off the stumps over there. It's ripped off. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> when you see them come up and you know it's a decent fish, everything changes. <laughs> oh no, as soon as I touch that net, mate, I know. Nope. Now you are. I want to scream, 
but there's a match over there. And I'm going to be very considerate. <laughs> yes! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> What about that for an absolute stunning carp? We're going to finish it with this fish. Oh, come on, Mark. <laughs> this has got to be one of the most enjoyable sessions we've had for a long time. What a stunning lake, what a stunning quality fish there are in here. And like we said at the beginning of it, it's not about size. Well, this one is actually coming up to a mid 20 anyway, uh, but. Look at it. Amazing. This is definitely one for you people to uh, pay a trip. Yeah, go home. Let's go home. She's coming down for another munch up. She's still right there. <laughs>